Hi there Kia owners, today in your 2022 Kia Telluride, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It's a Class 3 2-inch by 2-inch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your towing needs. Whether you're wanting to use this for accessories such as bike racks or cargo carriers, or if you're wanting to use it to pull a trailer, like a small pop-up camper, or maybe even a utility trailer to uh, bring a zero turn around and get some work done, you should be able to do that with this hitch. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now, one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at e-trailer, and you can also get locking ones to protect your investments. On bottom, we have hoop style safety chain loops with a very large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. Little one goes on and off with ease, and our big guy here also on and off very easily. This hitch offers a 750 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of the receiver. And that's gonna be enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes and the largest cargo carrier that we have here at eTrailer.com. You can fully load that up to the max as well and have a little bit of headroom left still on the tongue weight of this hitch. It also offers a 5,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. And with 5,000 pounds, you should easily be able to pull a small camper, uh, pop-up campers with ease. There's plenty of boats out there of a pretty decent size that you'd be able to pull as well. Now, as always, I recommend that you verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of its towing capacities. Now, I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, we measure right at about four inches. This is important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, it's right at about 15 and three quarters of an inch. And that's important when determining if you need to drop, a rise, or a raise shank on your accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with us and we'll show you how to get it installed. This is a fairly easy hitch to get installed. We will have to drop the exhaust down a little bit just to get it into place, but I'd say this is something you can do in your driveway in less than an hour. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. We've got our lift gate open. We'll have to lower down our spare tire. You can find your spare tire mechanism underneath your cover here there's a label right on the cover here that says spare tire you can use a screwdriver to pop that up and there is the bolt head that will lower down the spare tire we're going to use a 21 millimeter socket and just start lowering it down we're now underneath the vehicle we'll need to remove the under shield here on the driver's side there's three push pins on the bottom We'll remove those with a flat bladed screwdriver or you could use a trim panel tool. You'll see there's kind of like little notches in like a plus shape around it. You can stick your screwdriver in one of those little notches. That'll pop the head out and we can just pull it right out of there. So we'll get all of these removed and then we're going to switch over to a 14 millimeter socket. Just checking to see that that's loose. And then we're going to remove the nut here with a 14 millimeter socket and we're going to keep a little bit of downward pressure on it. That'll help that nut get removed. Once we get this one removed, we'll do the same thing with the other one. Now that we've got that panel removed, I just want to point out that this connector right here is your factory wiring connector. So if you're going to be installing wiring on your vehicle as well, I'd recommend doing that uh, while you're here before you put that panel back up, because again, it's right there. We'll now take a strap and we're going to put this in place between the suspension here. That way it'll support our exhaust because we are gonna have to drop that down. So there we go. I'll pull it a little bit tight. And then we'll change our focus now to the hangers, our rubber isolators there that are holding our exhaust in place. Use a little bit of silicone spray. That'll help make these pop off of there a little easier. Then we'll take our pry bar here and we're just gonna pry this off of there. There's another hanger at the other, the opposite corner. We're gonna remove that one as well. And we'll also have one right here in the middle. Now that we've got those removed, we'll just give a little bit of a support here and we're gonna use our strap to lower it down to give us a little more room to work. I've gone ahead and marked out the area that we need to trim for our hitch to fit through. You can take this panel down if you want. 
but it's a little deceiving. It's not just these two pins here. There's some more screws on the back side. So it's actually more difficult than it looks to remove the panel. So I'd kind of just recommend just cutting it there, uh, unless it's just too weird with the cutters that you currently have. We're just gonna use some snips and we're just gonna cut this out. Now I am switching to a razor knife here, uh, kind of towards this, the uh, more painted pattern, just cause it'll give us a little bit cleaner look. So we're just gonna use our razor knife here to slowly just work our way across here. And our file here, can we can knock off any of those burrs and rough edges here with our file. And then if we've got any paint or anything like that left behind, we can take a rag and clean all that up. And we're about ready to raise our hitch up, but before we do, to make sure we don't have any issues, we're gonna use a little bit of penetrating oil there and a bristle brush to clean out these holes to make sure our hardware threads in nice and easy. We'll do the same thing over on the other side, and if you need a bristled brush, you can get one here at e-trailer. So now with the next set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch into position. We need to get up over our exhaust, and then we'll raise it up to butt up against the frame. The holes in your hitch will line up with the holes in the frame. We're gonna take one of the long bolts, we're gonna stick it through the hitch and through the hole. I'm taking the washer and I'm sliding it down first too. That way it'll avoid that heat shield there and we can get it slid all the way through. We'll then do the same thing with our other bolt here. Get this one started. After I get it started in there, I'll slide that washer down to avoid the uh, heat shield. And then we'll push it through. Now this one here, the heat shield you can see here kind of does hit the head of the bolt a little, so it is gonna be a little bit of force to get that to go all the way in. Once we get one started on each side, the hitch will hold itself up. We're gonna go ahead and then take another conical tooth washer. We're gonna place it on the other side and we're gonna put a nut on it. I didn't tell you a minute ago, but uh, those conical tooth washers that we were putting in place, we want the teeth to be facing towards the frame there. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. And we'll put a conical tooth washer on there with the teeth facing towards the hitch and follow that up with a nut. We can then put the lower hardware in. Those are gonna be the shorter bolts that come in your kit and they're gonna have conical tooth washers as well, but they're gonna be a smaller conical tooth washer. So it's easy to make sure you don't get them mixed up. We want the teeth on these to also face towards our frame, towards our hitch, aiming up that way. And we'll thread these right into the bottom. There'll be two on each side, so we'll get the other side installed the same way. We can now tighten down our hardware. We're gonna start with the bottom bolts using a 17 millimeter socket. Snug those up. We'll do that on both sides to draw the hitch up against the bottom of the frame. And then we'll use a 19 millimeter socket and wrench or three quarter, either one will work fine. Tighten these down. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Now that we got our hitch installed, we can put our exhaust back into place. So we're just gonna spray down our hangers here to make them easier to put back on. And then we're just gonna lift it up and push it right back into place there. We'll just do the same thing with the rest of our hangers. We'll then take our strap down and we can reinstall that under shield that we had here on the passenger side. So we'll just raise that back up into position. Those plastic nuts that you had, those will actually just push right back into place. They just push right on there. And then our push pins will just line back up as well. And all that's left at this point is to reinstall our spare tire. When you go to put the spare tire back up, just pay attention when it goes up, it does fit, but you might have to push just a little bit towards the front so the lip of the tire doesn't catch on the hitch here. It will go right behind it and go up, but it may just need to be guided a little bit. 
And that completes our installation of Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2022 Kia Telluride.